welcome back today I've got a simple project I've got uh, four of these tiles of uh, pallet clamps to make and the only difference is they need to be this size this is for a CNC router so it doesn't have to be majorly thick material and it doesn't have to be hardened if you it's only going to be clamped to a wooden base so in order to bend this you need to break out the wood alright I hope you enjoyed this project but before I start I've had a viewer request asking me about uh, cutting M20 threads on the HQ800 which he recently acquired I'm quickly going to do a little discussion on that before we start in order to do thread cutting you need a, one of these uh, isometric uh, threading charts and then in this case we're going to look at the 20 M20 and that will be your, your outer diameter and 16.9 will be your core diameter which is the depth of the, your thread on the on this bolt the pitch is straightforward that is the distance between the, your threads that will be 2.5 millimeters and then your depth will be the amount that you cut from your outer diameter into the material you'll notice that uh, your pitch and your depth is not the same so you cut deeper than your your uh, actual pitch and then it also should have a flat on the end when you're done and most most of these things are rolled so they not properly machine as threads so there's no flats on it still sharp edges now in order to set up the machine it's very easy i'm going to bring you closer you can see on here when you're doing thread cutting that you've got two positions for cutting your threads I would suggest using the smaller gears which will mean that you're going to use your uh, 30 tooth gear in your A position which on the machine is the top gear and you're going to use your 24 tooth gear in your D position which is the bottom gear here this one you're going to leave it in place but you're only going to use the outer diameter of this gear to connect the two uh, gears together so this small little gear on it you're going to leave it alone and then note that you going to set your gearbox to 1 in order to get it perfectly aligned if you're using the 60 tooth gear you're going to set it to 2 so that is pretty straightforward when you do the thread cutting or the setting up of gears and uh, the gearbox the only thing that you need to keep in mind is your depth of cut when you're doing the threading now because this, this is a quite a, a deep thread I would suggest that you use a 29.5 degree angle on your compound because if you're going to plunge in straight from, your, from the side you're going to put a whole lot of load on the machine and I usually take around 0.1 to 0.15 millimeter depths of cut uh, per pass, which is quite heavy for this machine, but uh, it can be done. So I hope uh, it answers your question with regards to threading on the machine and setting up of the gears. Right, and back to the project.
kind of use the washer as a guide to do the running. It's not a precision surface, it's just more for aesthetics. And the washer provides me with a nice uh, profile. And uh, grinding it on a belt sander took me the same amount of time that it would have taken me just to set up the rotary table. And then uh, after using the rotary table and machining everything and then have to take it off and put the vise back on again, uh, that would have been uh, close to an hour wasted. And that's excluding the machining time. So yeah, I think the belt sander did a quick work of it. And it's uh, good enough. I am going to sandblast the surface once I'm done with the uh, slots. So the, the roughness I'm not concerned about because that's that's going to be blasted off. I want to leave it uh, textured because this is going to be used on wood. I would want it to be uh, quite grippy. Tapping these foils was so satisfying I had to show all four of them. There's no uh, faffing around with uh, tap followers and stuff like that and hand tapping or turning yourself blue in the face to get the hole like this tapped and it's, uh, it's a 20 millimeter deep hole. So yeah, I've saved myself a lot of effort in using the, the combination drill and uh, tap combo. Now the I know you can't do blind holes with them, but uh, in this case it's a through hole, so I just went for it. And it worked out nicely. Now this is as far as I'm going to take the, these clamps in this video. Now in the next uh, video I'll do the slots. And then I've got uh, something special in mind for the actual toe that's going to go in the, in the back. That's going to be a little bit of life work as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.